Hello again and welcome back. I'm Mike Jaregi, your trombone teacher. And before we get started, I want to make sure that you've gotten your instrument together and your slide is nice and greased. If it's making a lot of scratchy noises or it feels sluggish, go ahead and take the time now. Press pause on the video and I'll see you in a little bit. Today's lesson is going to be about learning the symbols that we musicians use to play certain notes for a certain amount of time. To get started, our first symbol is going to be a whole note. And a whole note looks like this. A whole note gets four beats. Bum. And then we would stop. Just like everything, there's always an opposite. So the opposite of sound is silence. And silence is a part of music too, so we have to be able to know how long we have to stay silent for. So, in opposite of the whole note, we have the whole rest, which looks like this. Just like the whole note, a whole rest gets four beats of silence. So, in this case, you can tell what a whole rest looks like because it looks like an upside down top hat. And out of the top hat, you have a little bunny. It's very heavy, right? So you want to hold it for four counts, okay? Four counts for a whole rest. Now, the next symbol we're going to use is the half note, which gets held for two beats, which looks like this. And the rest equivalent is the half rest, which looks like this. And you notice the difference between a half rest and a whole rest is that it looks like a top hat that has, that's empty. It doesn't have a bunny in it. So you can see the difference between this as a half rest versus a whole rest. A whole rest looks like it has, it's a top hat with a bunny in it. It's heavy and sinks down. That's why it sits below the line. Whereas a half rest doesn't have a bunny in it at all. So it's very light. So it sits on top of the line. So you want to make sure that this half rest is up, whereas a whole rest is down. So now we're going to talk about the last one, which is the quarter note. And a quarter note looks like this. And the quarter note, just like you have four quarters in a dollar, the quarter takes up one beat, and it takes four quarters to equal that of a whole note. And the quarter note's equivalent is the quarter rest, which looks like this. Now that we understand what they look like, we're going to apply this to our song Hot Cross Buns that we learned last week. The first one, we're going to use a half note on that first note, D. Let's go ahead and try that out. So here's our beat. One, two, ready. So we held it for two beats. Now, the next note, C, is going to also be for two beats, which is also a half note. Okay? So now let's play the C for a half note. One, two, ready. All right. And finally... We play a B flat for a whole note, which gets four beats. Okay, so let's do that. One, two, ready. All right, so when we put those two together a half note of D, a half note of C, and a whole note of B flat, we have the first part of our song. One, two, ready. All right. Now we know in the song that we do it again. So we're going to put another two half notes and a whole note. So let's try it. One, two, ready. All right. We got the next part, which is four quarter notes for the note B flat. And then we have four quarter notes of the note C. Let's try it. One, two, ready. All right. The final two half notes and whole note. D, C, and B flat. Let's finish it out. Two, ready. All right. Let's play.
play the whole song that way. Here we go. Here's our beat. One, two, ready? <laughs> done that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn a new song called A Claire de la Lune. It's a French song. It's pretty cool. All right so how this starts. Four quarter notes. Okay so four quarter notes and the first three are going to be B flat and then C. Okay so let's just try it. First measure of the first four beats. Here we go. B flat then C. One, two, ready? Let's try it again. One, two, ready? All right. Now the next two notes are D for a half note and C for a half note. Can we try that? Two, ready? All right. Let's put those two together. So we have three B flats, quarter note, C for a quarter note, D for half note, C for a half note. Okay, let's try it. One, two, ready. Excellent job. All right. So now we're going to get on to the next part. Now this has a cool little thing where we actually have a skip from B flat to D. So normally we've been going all the way up. So here we get to go to just fourth position from first position, okay? So we're going to go B flat for a quarter, D for a quarter, and then C for two quarters, okay? So we'll go B flat, D, C, C. Here we go. One, two, ready? Now all we have to do is add a whole note right after those quarters. So it's on B flat. Let's try it. One, two, ready. All right. Now let's play those four measures of notes and all of it together real quick. Here we go. So three quarter notes of B flat, C for a quarter note, D for a half note, C for a half note, B flat, D, C, C, and B flat for a whole note. Okay. So it should be on the screen. Follow along. Feel free to also repeat this video and just so you can get it down. This is all being learned by ear until we can start reading the pitches in the music where you can just start reading the music. But soon, soon we'll get there. Here we go. Those first four measures. One, two, ready? <laughs> best thing is now that you've played that much all we have to do is do that exact same amount one more time and that's the whole song so let's try it out let's play a claire de la lune one two ready <laughs> Awesome. Glad that you got that under your belt now. So now that we've done that, we're going to discuss a new note and it's called E flat. And E flat is played in third position. So if we consult our 
lesson chart, you'll see that it's in third position right before the bell. Let's try playing it. This is how it sounds. Third position E flat. E flat. Third position. Let's try it again. Let's play it for a whole note. Two. Ready? Let's play it as two half notes. One, two, ready? Let's play it as four quarter notes. One, two, ready? All right, so for the next lesson, we're going to discuss how to read notes on a staff as pitches and how to combine that with what we just learned here in our note durations lesson. I'll see you next time.